Hello there, I'm Guilherme Miller and I'm a web developer. I have a new course on Learnable called Put Things Together Building a Website. In this course, I'm going to show you how to plan and code the HTML and CSS for a website, using techniques that are tried and true and up to date. This course is perfect for you if you already have some basic knowledge of HTML and CSS and want to put these skills into practice by building a modern and complex website. Please check out this lesson from the course. Hi, I'm Guilherme. In this lesson, we are going to start the latest post section of the Erico website. Let's take a look at the content here in Photoshop. This will be a bit simpler than the other sections we did so far. There are two almost identical posts. The only things that change are the image and the background color. The title is already styled here in the page because all section headings are using the same styles. For column layouts, Floats are still the better choice. Before we edit the CSS, let's apply the group class to the elements in which we are going to float elements. One post will be floated left and the other right. Inside the post itself, we also have a two column setting, so we are going to use floats here as well. So in the HTML, let's add the group class to the post list UL and to each LI. That way, we can safely float the elements inside without breaking the layout. Now, in the CSS, I'll create a section for latest posts. There's a link wrapping each entire post, so let's apply some basic styles to it first. Post list A, text decoration none to remove the default underline, color FFF and display block. Then let's float each li. Post list li float left. The width of each post is about 440 pixels. Dividing that by the context 940 gives us 468 and some more decimal places. You can use that number if you want to. I've settled with 46.5% because I think that at the end of the day it looks more similar to the design and the text breaks at the same point. I'll also put here the first background color, which is this color sampled from the file. Now, how do we float the second post right? We could add an extra class to the second post, for example. Select it that way and override the other styles. Another way to do it would be with the nth child pseudo class. With the nth child selector, it's possible to select just even elements or every third on a list, for example. Let's try it. Post list ally, nth child even. Float right. And then background, the same orange from other parts of the website. This rule will only target the second, fourth, sixth list items, and so on. This is the result. Next, let's establish the columns inside the posts. Post text, post image, width 50%, and float left. This makes the columns equal width and floated. Here it is. For the first column, we need some padding. Post text, padding 1.25 em and 1.8 em. If we check this code in action, there's a problem. Because of how the box model works, the padding we applied is adding to the width of 50%. Some years ago, the solution was to create an inner div with the padding, which wouldn't mess with the defined width. Now, we can use the box sizing property. Let's add box sizing border box to the post text rule. This means that the border box, or the box that contains the border, padding and content, will be used for the width of the element, and borders and paddings will be contained inside it. This is a great tool for layout building today. The default value of this property is content box, which considers the width of 50% just for the content area. Paddings and borders would add to it, like we saw earlier. This was the tricky part of this section. Now we have just some text styling to do. Let's begin with the h3. 
post text h3, text transform uppercase, font weight bold, and font size 1.125 em. Next, the date. Post text time, display block because it's an inline tag and I want to ensure it, it appears on its own line. Margin 0.5 em top and bottom and zero left and right. Text transform uppercase, font weight bold and font size 0.75 em. Then there's the paragraph text. I'll just zero the margin here so it doesn't mess with the layout. Post text P, margin zero. We can also add a little hover effect. Post list A colon hover H3, text decoration underline. This is the result in the browser. Another section complete. With that, we end the lesson. Studying the latest post section, you have learned how to use floats, box sizing, and a clear fix class to create a two column layout within another two-column layout. All of this using percentages, so the website is ready to be turned responsive with a little more work. I hope you have learned some interesting things here. If you liked this lesson, please check out Putting It Together Building a Website at Learnable.com. Thank you, and see you there!